Welcome to the Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we have an interesting topic. Um, today's topic is going to be on the oxidation of carbon steel knives and what we have lovingly come to know as the patina. Okay, I know some other videos have been made recently on this, and I just want to talk about this for a second. I pulled out some knives from my own personal knife collection. If you are watching this video and you are new to Japanese knives, then you're probably unaware of the oxidative property of carbon steel knives. Carbon steel knives are generally looked at as knives that we can get to the sharpest possible level. And in seeking that level of sharpness, one of the problems that we have that we have to face is the fact that the blades, the steels themselves, oxidize when they're put in a moist slash acidic environment. And I tell you what, if you take a carbon steel knife and cut up an onion, you'll very quickly see what is going on with the blade. So I've got some examples of what's happening to these beautiful knives, what I can expect, and some of the things you can do about it. So let's get started. So first of all, go ahead and take a look at some of the knives we have here in front of you. Um, we have a 300 millimeter uh, blue number two Kurosaki uh, Yanagiba. You can see this beautiful mirror finish. There's a little bit of discoloration, which comes from some staining, which means I will have to take the time to polish this knife because there has been a reaction in this area. Next to that, we have the very famous 240 millimeter Masamoto KS. This white number two steel, carbon steel, what came in as a shiny, just like this knife, maybe not quite as mirror, and you can definitely see the patina. I know it's hard with the shadow that's directly over the knife, but um, you can definitely see that there is a, you can call it a mild rusting, but we have that really nice word patina. Next to that, we have the uh, 270 millimeter Hitahira Tanaka blue number two Gyuto. It has a Kasumi finish with a mirror edge and you can see the mirror has got a little bit of um, discoloration. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get some better lighting for this. Okay, so we have a lot of shadows and I apologize. But um, so you can see that in the Kasumi finish there's some discoloration. Again, this is going to take some polishing. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of polishing this knife because really it takes someone that's a little better trained than I am. Another Hitahiro. This is a 240 millimeter Kuritsuke. This is another Tanaka blue number two. And um, actually, I think this is a blue number one. And you can definitely see in the Kasumi finish some discoloration. So once again, I'll get to practice my polishing skills with this knife. Um, but no, below the Shinogi line, we're definitely seeing some darkening above it where it was a little bit more of a polish. You can see that there's um, the patina has started. And then we're going to move over to a knife that's never been used. Okay, so I just did a review on this knife. And this knife is the Hatsukoro 210mm Kuritsuke. It has every finish possible. It has the mirror finish, it has Damascus, it has Tashimi with the hammer marks, and it has the Kuriichi darkening. I would just pan back, honey, so that way you don't get all the shadows. We can always zoom in a little bit. Um, so you can definitely see at far some discoloration. And then, so this knife has not been used, so therefore it is not dis discolored. You can see I like to use my knives. And you go over here to uh, the Fuku 180 millimeter Super Blue Guto. Um, this particular knife, we did something called a forced patina. I'll talk about it in a second. This knife got used a lot. You can see that I've actually polished it some. Um, I actually had sanded it at first to get the original patina off. You can see that the entire edge is dark. And so what happened was instead of getting discoloration like you would over here that's very spotty. I went ahead and put this knife directly into coffee and I left it for about 15 to 20 minutes and in doing so the entire blade, the edge, the carbon steel that's sticking out, it oxidized evenly. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Again we're going to go to another knife that's never been used and yes this is a 240 millimeter 
Nakiri. I know you've never seen one of those before. And this um, Hinakuni Shiro. Um, this particular Nakiri has the Karichi finish. Um, I will be using that coming up in a review. But right next to it is the very famous Shigafusa. So this 165 millimeter um, Swedish steel. It definitely has the oxidation. We're going to be doing a polishing video specifically with this knife. And so you can see that each of these knives from being used, the ones that have been used, have their own character that has developed with them the entire time. So in my preview of this knife, I'll put a link in the uh, above. This knife, if I were to chop an onion, okay, this knife itself would actually become discolored in the area that would encompass, like say, the size of the onion. So if I'm making this chopping motion, the discoloration would happen in this area. So this is the type of knife that you might think you want to force the patina. And in doing so, you might actually put it in an acidic container. What we did with this, and I will um, find some footage for you and put it in. What we did was we brewed dark coffee. Um, we didn't have drink any of it. We didn't, <laughs> no sugar was put in there. We left it bitter. We put the entire knife in and we just let it sit. And when it came out, it came out beautiful and dark. Um, you can see already though, it has been sharpened since then. So even though you're looking at all the dark carbon steel bits cladded with stainless steel, if you got really close, I don't know if you can see it, the blade is light because it's been sharpened mm -hmm. since the patina. Mm -hmm. And so obviously the blade itself when used again will oxidize. But I think it turned out beautiful. I'm super happy with it. Um, so unfortunately, I was very saddened when I became a newbie knife owner. I was in the knife forums. And I'd gotten this brand new Masamoto KS that was super shiny mono steel. Um, and I used it and then there was all this staining. I was laughed at in the knife community because I was saddened that it was not as beautiful and shiny. I mean, I thought I did everything right. Um, now I understand what they already knew, which is the patina is part of the badge of the tool and using it. If I wanted to remove this, there are several options. One, you have, um, I think it's called bartender, barkeepers, barkeeper's friend. Um, it's one of the things you, you can use sandpaper. So there are several ways to take an abrasive to put it on and to remove it. If you do remove it, it's going to oxidize again. It's a little bit pointless. The only reason that I would do it is if I planned on forcing a patina. Um, on a mono steel, I don't feel comfortable forcing the patina because I'm just going to turn the entire knife black. I, I'm not saying that you can't do that. It would be even. But just, just know what I already know. You know, learn with me. Carbon, these are the things, these are the badges that come with being a carbon steel knife owner. This is a tool. You're going to use it. Stop being afraid. If I can find it, I'm going to include some footage in this video of Kevin Kent. Kevin Kent, the owner of Knifeware, showed a Hanyaki knife. If you don't know what Hanyaki is, it's a very expensive knife made of one steel, typically car a carbon steel like Super Blue. The Hanyaki, the way it's different than a mono steel like this white number two, is that the Hanyaki typically is heat treated, two different heat treatments in two different places. So it makes like a wave pattern, but it's still one steel. It's still a reactive carbon steel. And he showed that he had it custom made. He went to great lengths for measurements and all that to have a blacksmith make it. And it has stains all over it. And he said, that's part of knife ownership. So I just wanted you to know what you're getting into if you're going to be a carbon steel knife owner. Um, if you are into knife polishing and you're eager to learn, as I'm going to be learning, uh, you can make this more even by taking different stones. You can do it with sandpaper. Traditionalists would use a Japanese natural stone. 
we're going to be doing that. So we're going to be using the stone itself as a series of abrasive sandpaper. And we're going to be taking off and making a nice polish like what you see here on this knife. We hope to restore it like this. The one of the ways that you can store these knives to make sure that they, um, that they don't go through this process is there is a product called Camellia Oil. Um, other companies have it by different names. So we have a, a bottle here for you. So it is a type of oil that's not a food-based oil that it's uh, going to go rancid onto your blade. If you're storing your knife for a long period of time, you could take a little bit, put it on, and the oil is going to help protect against oxidation. If you're using your knives as a regular basis, I don't think that you need to do it. I think that you need to let the oxidation happen. Um, this hurt my heart. And it's a beautiful knife still anyway. It has character. It will take a little bit of work. If you're going to buy one of these knives, you have to be willing to know the time and energy you're going to have to put in it. Okay, but at least you now know my knives get used. I'm glad once again to bring you some more of the knives to the collection. The collection has grown. We'll be bringing to you a, a video this year, the 21 knives of 2021. Some of these you've seen in past videos, some of them you haven't. If I go through all of the 55 knives, I think in the collection, you would actually see stainless steel, carbon steel of various kinds, and you would see them in all of their different states. I thank you once again for supporting the channel. I hope that this um, was helpful to you if you're gonna get into it. And honestly, the performance is amazing and outweighs the entire process. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. God bless.